The purpose of this series is to better understand our minds and how to train ourselves to better our lives and train our inner beasts. We will start off first with teaching universal conditioning and training in all animals using cats. Cats are nothing new in regards to my videos, but in this case, there is a real reason besides the inner webs is full of funny pictures of them. Dogs can be trained to do things because they're pack animals. Aside from dogs, cats are the most studied animals to train because they're in all of our lives. If dogs are children, then cats are autistic children. They do not get the same emotional reward out of social feedback and nuance. They don't have the social drive and empathy to read us. They don't do boundaries unless it's the rest of the world following theirs. They feel life should run on their terms, they're easily overstimulated, and they want physical and emotional interactions, but only on their terms. Training all animals requires learning the rules for training cats. However, dogs and humans have other layers and tools you can use for training, so we'll use cats as a base. Cat training relies on four major methods, conditioning, reward, environment, and restriction. Many people tend to anthropomorphize their pets and assume motives for their animals acting up or misbehaving, when there is a logical reason for why they are acting up, but it's more like a puzzle to solve. Sadly, many people take it personally or try to beat through the puzzle, just making things worse. Children at certain developmental stages are much the same way. An example of puzzle solving is of a woman who had a cat that started peeing all over the house just out of the blue. The owners were naturally confused. Dr. Sampson, the vet in the book listed below, realized that the cat had a UTI. When an animal feels pain or sickness when doing something, it will associate that action or stimulus as a cause and try new things. This is why animals appear to know cures for different diseases when they're actually just trying something different and not doing what they were doing before. This cat kept trying to pee in different places around the house in hopes that this new location wouldn't hurt. The first thing the vet had to do was fix the problem. The UTI was fixed, however the conditioning was now set. Horses have the same problem with injury and less reconditioned. They can walk or move as if the injury is still there, even if it's long healed. So they had to recondition the cat. This involved changing the environment. The cat's box and litter were completely switched out as the cat had linked the smells in that type of litter to the burning urine. They ended up using cheese as a way to create positive reinforcement, though that ended up backfiring as the cat realized he was rewarded with cheese when he went to the cat box and he woke them up at 2 in the morning to let them know he was going to use the cat box and they'd better ante up with the cheese. This required new conditioning, but the positive connotation of the cat box was there. Many people don't understand what is going on in the mind of their animal, their child, or themselves, and they take their anger out on themselves when they or their pets can't live up to their expectations. Their inner beast then retaliates or runs and hides, preventing you from making any meaningful progress in your training. Guilt and shame blocks willpower. If you can learn and study the workings and nature of your beast and solve the puzzle of the problem, you can fix your beast's irrational and bad behavior and be much more healthy. Many people need attention and validation by others. However, if excessive, other people can find that need overwhelming, causing them to pull away. A certain cat owner was at her wit's end, trying to figure out why her cat had stopped loving her. The cat, however, seemed to want attention of her husband, who was very much not a cat person. This lady took it as personal rejection and took it out on her own inner beast, making the problem worse and her need for acceptance even worse. Dr. Sampson said that it's very common for cats to enter a room full of people and head directly for the person that least likes cats. With that many people in the room ooing and aahing and want to pet and snuggle it, the cat can be very overwhelmed and just want to chill with someone. So it heads for the person who isn't being overwhelming and who isn't fawning over it. It's one of the reasons why the person you're infatuated with has the least interest in you because you're so overwhelming when around them. It's why the miracle method, though not recommended, can work because if you appear like you aren't interested or at least going to treat them as an equal and not a god or goddess, which is a lot of pressure to live up to, they will be more drawn to you, especially if the stimulation is so high. 
People like being admired, but for things they like about themselves. Often the outside obsessed observer really focuses on things she either thinks is weird, unimportant, or she doesn't actually do anything to have that trait, or hates about herself, making things more awkward. Many will take rejection out on themselves, making them even more starved for attention, creating a vicious cycle that makes their social life even worse. The vet stopped the cycle by having the woman train herself to ignore and give the cat space. I'm sure it killed the woman to do so because she loved the cat and wanted to love it in the way that made her feel good and in the way she felt expressed her love. It didn't feel like love to the cat though, just overpowerful stimulation. Her petting alone probably felt like a constant tickle because all cats and people's nerves and perceptions are different. She then had to calmly and lightly learn to pet the cat with one or two fingers and carry treats to create positive and safe conditioning from being in her lap. Thanks to Asperger's, my ribs and joints are hypersensitive and I have insomnia. If it were up to my girlfriend, she'd be laying all over me at night. That's how she shows love. However, I perceive it differently, so she has to adjust, just as I do with things that I associate with showing love that she doesn't perceive as pleasant. Thanks to Asperger's, I'm also naturally overstimulating. I can exhaust people just by being around them and talking to them. Asperger's are also super obsessed, and when I had a crush, I was so overstimulating, it's any wonder they tolerated me as much as they did. I, of course, internalized this refusal as rejection, which made me even lonelier and depressing to be around, which, of course, is a massive turn-on. The only girls who wanted me were so needy that they acted like doormats and I knew if I tried to date them, I would fully take advantage of that, even if I didn't mean to. It was not until I had conditioned myself to a point where I was just enjoying dating for the sake of dating that I was able to find someone who fit the complex criteria for a relationship. She wasn't someone I was smitten with and I put up on a pedestal, so there was no pressure there. We were equals. She was also, if not as obsessed with science and many nerdy things as I was. I had also conditioned myself with Buddhism and Taoism to be Zen and relaxed, making me less overstimulating. I was 30 by the time this happened, staggering in the dark. Maybe some of this will help some of you avoid many of the pitfalls sooner. The cat ended up becoming more conditioned to the woman, and the woman had trained her inner beast to set aside her emotions to love her cat the way he perceived love, and not just the way she wanted to give it. There is an idea out there that if people don't like you the way you are, then they aren't worth your time. Sadly, this mindset may prevent you from actively changing things about you that drive good people away who could be your friends in other circumstances. Friendship goes both ways, and changing who you are by training your inner beast can make a friendship stronger and more enjoyable for everyone involved.